Today, I visit with Tom Schwab from Interview Valet. Everyone, this is Tom Fox back for another episode. And today we have an interview that literally is years in the making as I'm thrilled to have with me, Tom Schwab. Tom, first of all, welcome to the podcast. Tom, thank you. We've met each other years and years ago at podcasting conferences and excited to talk with you and let the world listen in. Oh, many thanks. Uh, Tom, could you tell us your professional background? Sure. So I started as an engineer, right? So went to the U.S. Naval Academy, ran nuclear power plants, then got into the corporate world, right? And went from the corporate world and medical devices to running my own distributorship and then running my own business. My business was HubSpot's first e-commerce case study. It was also voted the second most unsexiest thing to sell online. But we really used inbound marketing to go from a regional player to a national leader, sold that company. And about uh, 10 years ago, I started to play around with this crazy idea that you could use podcast interviews, almost like we used to use guest blogs 20 years ago, to tap into that audience, to tell that story, to get that know and trust. And really, that's what we've been doing for the last 10 years here. So why should someone go on a podcast and be interviewed? Well... I think that's the action, right? It's the results that you really want to focus on, right? Because podcast guesting is not marketing, but podcast interview marketing is a powerful channel. So if you're in a relationship sale where people have to know and trust you, it's not just a transaction. It's not just finding the, who the cheapest person is. So if you're in that kind of relationship sale, people have to know you right? And the best way today is through conversations. Everybody's trying to break through the noise and nobody's getting heard, right? Social media is getting to be this wasteland of doom scrolling. And I had one, one client said that he wanted to be on podcast interviews because he thought most of digital marketing and, and social media was like advertising above a urinal. It wasn't helping his business. So if you want to get heard, if you want to get seen as a thought leader, if you want, if you're like me as an engineer and writing blogs is a homework assignment, well, talk, answer the questions and, and get out there on podcast interview marketing. I, I think today, more than any time, obscurity is our biggest problem. We could help so many people. The problem is they don't hire the best. They hire the best they know of and we're obscure to them. Tom, I often tell people that the podcast is much like you said, it, it's not the podcast itself. It's the actions that flow from that. And I'll tell people that the podcast can create multiple and in many ways, unlimited pieces of social media marketing content. Is that a message that resonates with your client base as well? My team has told me that they can get a month's worth of content out of every interview, right? And think about it. You talk for 45 minutes, a half hour, whatever you can transcribe that. And now you've got all this content. You can have someone else break it up into blogs. You can get audio clips. You can get video clips. We even had one client that used it as frequently asked questions and they just put the video clip of their CEO answering that. And so all of that is powerful and not everybody listens to podcasts, right? As crazy as that is to us, that anybody that's listening to this is not everybody does this. No, 61% of the U S population listens to podcasts, but that other 39%, they can read the blogs. They can see the snippets, whatever it is. So today, more than ever, it's easy for us to create and then repurpose it in ways that other people can consume. Let me just see if I can translate that into my trial lawyer math of 69%. <laughs> That's about 225 million people. That's a lot of folks listening to podcasts. It is. And you think about it, we'll, we'll have clients and I'll say, would you drive across town to talk to 10 ideal customers or jump up on a plane to talk to 100 ideal customers? And you can tell some of them are like, I don't want to talk in front of that many. So that's okay. You can just stay in your office, jump on uh, a podcast and talk to thousands, tens of thousands throughout time with podcast interviews. Tom, what finally got me off my duff and to ask you to come on this podcast is a great new innovation I saw that you guys had come up with called uh, Connect, 
Could you tell us about that, what the innovation is and how you hope to use it? Yeah. And interview valet has been around for nine years, right? And there's a consolidation in the marketplace. And we actually acquired connect from a publicly traded company and it gave us access to lots of data. It gave us access to higher education because all of people have similar struggles where they want to get out there and get their word out and higher education. This is working great for also. And it also has given us access to the production talent because people will say, should I be a guest or a host? I don't like it's an either or, right? It's being a guest is a great way to get out there and get new likes, get new exposure, get new leads. But being a host is a great way to nurture your current audience, to nurture your current leads, to nurture your current clients. So Connect has given us that ability too. So we're excited for the future of Interview Valet and for podcast interview marketing. Tom, is there a standard client for Interview Valet? Is it business to business? Is it entrepreneurs? Is it authors? Is it all of the above or perhaps none of the above? I look at it more in what the sale is as opposed to who the person is, right? So first of all, it has to be a relationship. People have to know and trust you. So sometimes that is a coach or a consultant. It could be a nonfiction author. The other thing is that it has to be a regional, national, or even a global audience, right? So if you can only serve people that are within a 10-mile driving radius of you, podcast interviews reach an entire nation. So that doesn't really work for you. And then the other thing too, is that we look for people that are inspiring thought leaders, right? If you've got a different viewpoint, a different idea, we do a lot with category design because it takes time to introduce somebody to a new idea. You can't just put it up in a, a little social media post. You've got to be able to introduce that idea to them. So this medium is powerful for all of those people. If you're doing a relationship sale, if it's a higher ticket item, if you're trying to explain a new way of doing things, and if you can serve a wide geography. Tom, why do you believe the podcast medium really engenders and leads to greater trust. That's interesting. We've talked about this a lot and it really struck me. There's a great book called the new leadership literacies. Joe Hansen is a, a futurist out of Stanford. And I can remember reading his book, right? And to me, reading is listening to the book. And he got in there and he said, the future is vivid audio. And I thought I misheard it. And I, I rewound it. And I'm like, no, the future's got to be vivid video. And I listened to him and he's no, it's audio. And he gave some examples. And I think it goes to your point, Tom, on why this is so powerful is that audio talks directly to us, right? There's no distractions, right? You're just in people's ears. The other thing too, is it's not discriminatory. So when you watch somebody's video, you can always say, they're too old. They're too young. Look at the size of his lapels, right? This has got to be an old video. But when you listen to audio, you're really listening to the content. And let me give you an example of this. A few years ago, my niece was studying for her real estate license and they had told her to listen to these Zig Ziglar. At that time it was MP3s or whatever. And she reached out to me and she's uncle Tom, have you ever heard of Zig Ziglar? I thought you would like him. And here it is. I didn't have the heart to tell her, honey, Zig has been dead for over a decade. And those recordings were probably done before you were born. But for her, it was still meaningful, right? If she would have looked at his hair or his lapels, I don't think she would have even listened to any of it. But at this point, she could listen to them and appreciate it. And she could listen at the time she wanted, when she wanted, even at the speed she wanted. And I can't think of any other medium that allows us to do that. I'm going to suggest the one, which is uh, Dale Carnegie, because not only can you and I listen to remarks from someone who uh, may have given them 20 years ago, 
who my uncle listened to in the 60s and 70s. But we can go back and read Dale Carnegie's book, which was actually a series of lectures transcribed. And so the power of all that allows someone your, like your niece to get, I'm also an Uncle Tom, so I have to shout out to that. <laughs> the power of that wisdom, uh, can she can utilize in selling real estate. And I find that one of the most amazing things possible. And the recognizable nature of audio, right? I was amazed the first time I was in an airplane and someone came up to me and they said, are you Tom Schwab? And my first reaction was, are you a process server? And <laughs> I said, yes. And I, I didn't know who they were. And they said, oh, I recognize your voice. Now think of how many people we see and we don't recognize them because they don't look like their picture or they're dressed differently, whatever it is. But your voice really doesn't change over time. And how powerful is that, that someone can recognize your voice? That means they truly recognize you as an expert. Tom, you've been in the marketing world for quite some time. You mentioned HubSpot prior to Interview Valet. Are you able to work with your clients and customers to help create for them really an entire social media marketing strategy, whether it's led by podcast or podcasts are a part of that. Yeah. It's, and to me, it's always that strategy, right? The whole marketing strategy too often. Now I see people just using silver bullets, right? You should do this. You should do that. It's a tactic, but how does that get you to what your ultimate goal is? That's the strategy. So we always look at that and say, what are you trying to accomplish? What does success look like for you? And then what do you enjoy doing the most and what don't you, right? How can we repurpose that? How can we get you the most results from your time and your money invested? And so often in the podcast guesting space, the truth is that most podcast guesting agencies get paid by the interview, right? So they're telling you more and more. I just look at it and say, why don't you do more with the interview? right? Instead of trying to go on a hundred interviews this month, why don't you do four foundational interviews? Why don't you focus on different things so that you can repurpose those and we'll help you repurpose it. We'll help you slice and dice that to get shorts. We'll help you use that so that you can get the most from it. Because at the end of the day, the goal is not more podcast interviews. It's more results from every podcast interview. You've also written a book entitled Podcast Guest Profits. Could you tell us about your book? Let me say that first, one of my college roommates, so Tom and I were talking before I went to the Naval Academy, and he was going to give it a two-star review and call it the worst coloring book ever because he knew how I was with writing, and he thought the only thing I would ever write is a coloring book. But I took what we were doing, right, at Interview Valet, I dictated it out just like I'd be here on a podcast. And then we cleaned that up. We repurposed it and we made it into a book, Podcast Guest Profits, How to Grow Your Business with a Targeted Interview Strategy. It's the playbook that we use in order to get results from podcast interviews. And Tom, one of the, the biggest compliments I got from it was there was a couple of gentlemen down in South Africa during COVID. They use that book to launch their entire agency and they just focus on the South African market. They called me up and they said, this is genius. And I'm like, I don't know about that, but let's see how it works in your market. And I, I want people to be able to get more results from it. What we do is not, it's not a secret. It's not magic. It's a system. It's a process and people can do that. And what happens with a lot of our clients is they'll look at the book. They'll go, wow, there's a lot here to get results. And some of them will say, I want to do all this. Other people would say, can I just be the guest and you take care of the rest? And I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. Tom, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode, but if our listeners wanted any more information on your book about you and certainly interview valet or perhaps even connect, what would be the best place or places for them to go? Tom, thank you so much for having me here. And one of the things we figured out is the easiest way is to always send people to one place, right? You're listening, you're multitasking. So just go to interviewvalet with a V.com 
forward slash slash CPN for Compliance Podcast Network. And I'll put a copy of the book there. You were gracious enough to talk about it. If you want a free copy, you can get it there. There's a little assessment, 10 questions. Will podcast interview marketing work for you? And then if you'd like to talk with me or connect with me on social media, I'll put all of my information there. So it'll all be back at interviewvalet.com forward slash CPN. Tom, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to come visit with me today, and I hope we can continue this conversation. Thank you, Tom. This is Tom Fox. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Fox on Podcasting. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. Fox on Podcasting is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.